Welcome to another edition of Flea Market Fantasy, the world's second greatest Bronze Age era comic book podcast. Joining me, as always, is new Mike L. Kevin Jank. I am here, although I may be changing my name to Roy G. Bivolo. That is a hell of a name. <laughs> Roy G. Yeah. Who would have thought a guy like that would end up having rainbow powers? What are the odds? That's the name of this week's villain, the Rainbow Raider. I think I erroneously called him the Rainbow Warrior. The end of last yeah, week. put some respect on his name. Yeah, <laughs> please forgive me. The Rainbow Raider, <laughs> and uh, today we're reading the Flash issue two eighty six from nineteen eighty. It's uh, the first time we were actually doing a Flash issue from the regular series, <laughs> and I think you can see why. But uh, <laughs> no, no, Jack, uh, this was a delight. <laughs> uh, we had planned for your cousin Pete to be here. Because yeah, Pete, he's a big it, Flash guy. So yeah. I was like, hey, we, let's try to get Pete. Uh, and he was booked up until maybe like three hours ago. Yes. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I kind of had to pull out because he's, he got slammed at work. Uh, so <laughs> Because I'll, I'll be honest, I had some questions and I was doing the research for this issue. issue and I thought, <laughs> I who cares? Pete will be here. He can answer any yeah. question I got. <laughs> I don't even worry about it. <laughs> Pete will be here. Yeah. Nice, nice theory. Yeah, but, <laughs> and practice well, not so much. Pete's not here now, so I don't have to call you Kev. That's, That's the right. Thing. Yeah. yeah, every cloud has a silver lining, Mike Dell. Yeah. Or maybe it's a violet covered, you know, lining this week. Who knows? I can't see color. Yeah, I was gonna say yes. <laughs> this villain's <laughs> backstory is amazing. <laughs> yeah. It really is one of the greatest things ever. We'll get into that in a moment. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. I believe we're up to 220 subscribers. We picked up one Ooh. from last <laughs> week, I believe. So it's like the good. masses are not rallying to get this Dark Knight month going. <laughs> no. <laughs> Again, if we get to 500 subscribers, Jank will force me to read the Dark Knight every week for a month. So. <laughs> we need to make this happen. Like, just get your friends to, <laughs> to subscribe, even if they never watch the video. <laughs> no one watches the video, so don't worry about it. <laughs> All right, but let's talk about this week's uh, comic here, The Flash. Now, you say Pete's a big Flash guy. Uh, are you a big Flash guy, Jack? Um, You know, not so much. I did watch the CW show for a little bit. Uh, hey, so did I. I think I watched the old one a little bit back in the day. I seem to slightly remember it. Uh, but overall, no. <laughs> I guess The Flash is, uh, he's got some interesting villains for sure, but He's one of those characters where it's like, I don't know how you write good stories for this guy when he could just literally knock anybody out without them yeah. even knowing he's there. Like, that's my problem with it too. <laughs> yeah. And like, how does he ever get in trouble? Cause like, it's a cold gun like Captain Cold has. Like, if he could just punch him before he even knows the Flash is there. Like, <laughs> yes, I don't understand just that. Just pick up a bunch of rocks, throw them really fast from like across the street <laughs> and they'd be like bullets and just take them out in two seconds. Well, yeah, by the time they can even recognize he's there, it's too late. Yeah. Yeah. So I never. I mean, maybe unless you, you could fight the Hulk or something where like the Hulk, you know, even if you punch him with your normal person's strength, like it's not going to do anything. Like maybe that's the only villain who could really hold you know, a candle against him. But I don't know. Most you know, like human people, like they're going to go down like a sack of bricks. <laughs> but he <laughs> has to. Like, his body, he has to be stronger than the average human, right? His muscles and bones yeah. have to be so strong from running, you know? <laughs> like, they have to be denser. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't get it either. But Yeah. In theory, it's Plus, a pretty cool. Like, run so fast that you can go back in time and just redo it if yeah. you wanted to. <laughs> That's like, all right. <laughs> they got ridiculous with all that. And then the other thing, uh, didn't Superman beat him in a race? I mean, wasn't it like, then what are we, or weren't they like neck and neck? I mean, then. Yeah, sometimes it's been, they've been neck and neck, but I think the Flash has to be faster. Yeah, you have to be the Flash. You (laughs) have to be faster. Yeah. Otherwise, just hang it up. Like, you know? Yeah, Yeah. it's like, what are you even doing here? We already got a guy who does everything you do times 10. (laughs) Hey, you fly. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I I like the Flash. comes in and he's like, hey, Superman, dig, hit the bricks. (laughs) I've got all your powers and telepathy and invisibility and everything else. Uh, the Flash looks cool. That's a nice, nifty little costume there, you know? Yeah. The lightning bolt and all. That <laughs> outfit. But, uh, yeah, I hear you on the whole uh, too fast to even stop, so I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, 
All right. Uh, the original Flash was a fellow named Jay Garrick. We've talked about him That's on right. the show many times. And his first appearance was Flash Comics issue one, 1940, created by Gardner Fox and Harry Lampert. And uh, he got I learned this for this issue. Uh, Jay Garrick got his powers during a smoke break gone wrong. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Our buddy Tuffy better be, you know, careful when he's out there burning darts. Yeah, he's a uh, he's a scientist there in the lab. And he needed, he wanted to just take a break. So he lit up a dart right there in the lab and he started smoking it. And he's like, man, I'm getting a little dizzy. I probably shouldn't be smoking on an empty stomach. And he got, he got like woozy and he backed up into some chemicals and it caused it to go off. And, uh, yeah, he, he became the flash. <laughs> he was That's probably odd. like, Oh, I'm getting woozy. I better put something in my belly. Here's some gin. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> just doing everything wrong. I had no idea that's how he got his powers, but uh, that's how it went down. So then the second Flash, the guy, the guy we're reading about here today, his real name is Bartholomew Henry Allen, but everybody calls him yeah. Barry. And, uh, Even though Bart's way cooler. Yeah, I like just Bartholomew. I think uh, I, I, I insist that everybody call me Bartholomew. And his first appearance. Say, say my name, but it's worth it. As a little kid, if I learned to spell that in kindergarten, you're all going to say it. And uh, <laughs> his first appearance was Showcase 4, 1956, created by Robert Kaniger and Carmine Infantino. And he was a mm-hmm. forensic chemist for the police department there. And one day he was working in his lab, and a bolt of lightning came right through the window and cracked a uh, shelf full of chemicals. And, uh, yeah. That's how he <laughs> became the Flash. <laughs> At least he wasn't smoking at the time. Otherwise, who knows what would have happened. We had a super fast growing cancer, lung cancer. <laughs> now this Barry Allen fella, he died in uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth, issue eight, nineteen eighty five, and I, he he died saving the universe there, right? Like that was his thing, right? He said, "Yeah, before. wasn't there some kind of like cosmic tr- treadmill or something? He had to like run fast on it treadmill. so that it would, <laughs> so that it would save you know the multiverse or whatever." I don't know. DC is so stupid. <laughs> and uh, he was gone from comics for 23 years before returning in Final Crisis Issue 2 in 2008. So they did bring that, him back. That is a, that's a pretty good run of staying dead. Yeah, they tried their best to keep him gone. But usually all these TV shows and everything, like, they always do the Barry Allen version of Flash, right? Mm-hmm. I think so. I'm pretty sure, like, the uh, the cartoon, the Justice League cartoon, that was Barry. Barry Allen, right? Yeah, like that CW show, I'm pretty sure it was Barry Allen, right? Yeah, that one's definitely Barry Allen. Uh, yeah, yeah I, watched, I, I watched a couple, of, I think the first two seasons of that, I mean. Um, yeah. It has enjoyed it. Yeah. Seems like every season, like, they just had the big bad be a different speedster, and then he would have to learn, learn to go run faster than he ever ran before. It's like, <laughs> oh, this is getting repetitive. <laughs> And then after uh, Barry Allen left, uh, Wally West took over the Flash mantle, and he was uh, Barry's nephew by marriage. Yeah. And uh, wouldn't you know it, he was in a lab when some lightning came in and cracked some chemicals, <laughs> and that's how he became the Flash. Oh, God, what are the chances? The same, same exact chemicals. <laughs> that is nuts. But anyway, I, in this, in this thing issue. Is, like, the Flash is like, I think he ultimately gets his powers from, like, the speed so what is with these lightning bolts and these exact chemicals that somehow lets you tap into this speed force that's existed for centuries? Like this, <laughs> I don't that's know. Weird. Well, it's no weirder than the speed force. What the hell is that? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this issue today, it's Barry Allen and uh, the villain in this book, the Rainbow Raider, as you mentioned, yeah. Roy G. Bivolo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's classic. This this I, this doing this show has really given me a better perspective on these old comics, which definitely <laughs> were for kids. Like they're terrible, uh, and you could never like make a movie or a TV show based off of these. But uh, boy, like they are fun. RGB baby, and uh, I hate to break this to you though, Jack. He's no longer with us. He, oh. Uh, oh, he died in the Flash Volume Two, Issue One Eighty Three, in two thousand and two. Someone called the Amunet Black killed him. Huh. Amunet Black. I think that, from what I could tell, uh, again, this is one of those things I was going to ask Pete, but I think it's like a lady that runs some underground uh, criminal empire in Capital City or something, I think. 
I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. So he was just killed by a mobster, probably for yeah, gamble. No, well, again, don't don't quote <laughs> me on that. You should really consult Pete for all your flash needs. I mean, this is a guy where it's like I don't know how you do more than one Rainbow Raider story. To be honest, like, what's he going to make the Flash lose his color again? Like, <laughs> this guy's <is> great. <laughs> Like, it's good for a one-off, but I don't know how you make him recurring. And uh, the writer for this issue is Carrie Bates. He is born 1948 in Pennsylvania. We've talked about him before. I'm pretty sure he wrote that other Flash thing we did, the uh, giant-sized annual. But uh, when he was 13, he started submitting cover ideas to DC. And they actually purchased a few and published them. How about that? Oh. Wow. Like, I guess the ideas, and then they had to redrew them, you know? And uh, mm-hmm. the the first was the cover to Superman 167 in 1964. And he started selling stories to DC when he was just 17. Wow. He had 699 writing credits at DC, including a ton of Flash. His first issue was 179 in 1968. But then uh, he did all but nine issues from 206 to 350, ending in 1985. So that is a hell of a run over 10 years there on the Flash. Yeah. So well, they killed off his character, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. He just He's like, I ain't doing crisis. this new fun. <laughs> uh, he also had long runs on Superman, Superboy, and Action Comics. He only did a handful of books of Marvel, but he worked on the new universe titles Night Mask, Star Brand, and Spitfire and the Troubleshooters. Hey. How about that? And the artist for this <laughs> book. at Marvel for their best stuff. Yeah. <laughs> they brought him in for the heavy hitters. <laughs> yeah. And the artist for this book is Don Heck. I don't know if we've ever actually talked about him here on the show, but uh, kind of a famous oh, guy. Somewhere. He uh, was born in 1929 in Queens, New York, died in 1995 uh, at the age of uh, 64. And he had 212 penciling credits at D.C. He did issues uh, 198 of The Flash. And then he came back and was the regular penciler for issues 280 to 295. So we're right in the middle there. But he's uh, most famous for his work at Marvel, where he co-created Iron Man, the Wasp, Black Widow, Hawkeye, and Wonder Man. And he followed Jack Kirby on the Avengers, starting with issue 9 in 1964 and doing 30 of the next 31 issues. Yeah, and I think Don Heck, I think the Avengers are on there, you know, so. Yeah, um, I can see that. Yeah, there's the creators here for this issue. Anything else about The Flash we should know, Jack? Um... I don't think so. <laughs> like you mentioned, it is a cool costume. Uh, runs really I do fast. like. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of everything you need to know about the Flash. I feel like I like the Jay Garrick because he wore that metal helmet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so he just kind of looks like a weird messenger. Like, uh, yeah, he's based on her. <laughs> he works yeah. for. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I guess you know you're like, well, how could you keep his secret identity? He didn't even wear a mask. But what he used to do, I don't know if you like this, the ladies loved him for this, but he would just vibrate very quickly. And so his face would be blurry, so no one could ever see who he was. <laughs> about that? I mean, that sounds like you're banking on never getting knocked out or... <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Losing concentration for one second. <laughs> his hand, somebody hands him like a milkshake or something. Hey, drink this, buddy. And then he says this. Right okay, right. Yeah. Oh, I spilled milkshake all over my nice shirt. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's look at the cover, Jack. This is a hell of a cover. And I think I had this book when I was a kid because I remember the cover, and uh, that's why I picked it. But, uh, yeah, describe this for us. Did you pick it now because it's Gay Pride Month? <laughs> oh, I didn't even think of that. But <laughs> it all ties together beautifully, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good synergy. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's a pretty interesting-looking cover. We got the little DC logo up there in the top left. Uh, this is the fastest man alive, the Flash. And the Flash's letters are all in black, and they're kind of like little speed lines at the edges to like make them like blurry because they're going so fast, uh, essentially. Yeah. Uh, only 40 cents and all new, so that's pretty good. You don't want any retreads in this. Uh, <laughs> and it says, and can the Crimson Comet discover his grim secret? Before he becomes its next victim. Oh, who is the Rainbow Raider? Yeah. The other side? <laughs> That's where I should start, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who is the Rainbow Raider? And, and can the Crimson Comet discover his grim secret before he becomes its next victim? And uh, then it's basically a... You see a silhouetted man, just a white silhouette, where the who is the Rainbow Raider 
is pointing to, so clearly that's him. Uh, but we're not getting too good a look at him just yet. And, uh, radiating out from him, kind of like Havoc used to have his, you know, circles of energy radiating out from him, uh, are these rainbow, you know, concentric circles going out in all the different colors of the rainbow. And, uh, there's the Flash kind of caught up in these different rainbow colors. And he's kind of coming to a halt, like he's, you know, got to stop real quick. Um, and it says Hack and Giordano, so I guess this is them. Yeah, Dick Giordano with the inks. Yeah, I love this cover. This is great. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Pretty good. This it, is amazing. <laughs> I don't know if it's the best cover material. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it is. Uh, dig the uh, body position of the Flash. The uh, the circles. The, you know they. They're not exactly uh, even, you know, they're like uh, lopsided to give movement and stuff. And mm-hmm. oh, I, I love it. it. It's great. Very colorful, Jack. Hey, yeah, that it is. <laughs> it definitely has a lot of color. Just because you hate Pride Month. Don't take it out on me and the Flash. <laughs> right? But, uh, it, it's good. It's good. I liked it. But hey, when you open up the book, uh, right inside the cover there, we get the saga of Johnny West. Yeah. This harrowing tale of Johnny oh, West. Oh, sure. Uh, I guess this is Johnny West here. He's uh, he's a cow poke, uh, just kind of sitting on a fence, like an old wooden fence. Johnny West, wearing his Acme <laughs> boots, keeps an eye out for kids in trouble. It's I don't like the, the fact that he's keeping an eye on kids a lot. That, that kind of creeps me out. Him and Dave Sim. <laughs> These are enormous cowboy boots. They go all the way up to his knees. They're <laughs> <laughs> thigh highs, Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so this is one day after school. Scram, kid! I'm borrowing your horse. Looks like a job for Johnny West. The kid's like, "Gee, Johnny West, I wish I could stand up trouble like you do." You can by standing proud in Acme boots. Wow, Acme boots! You bet, <laughs> Acme boots. <laughs> Acme's making the great Western boots. That's a terrible sentence. <laughs> Making the great western boots. <laughs> the next day, it's a different story. Now this kid's got his boots on. He's strutting tall and it's like, wow, how did you scare that big creep off? And he just thinks to himself, thanks, Johnny West. So, yeah, I guess just the fact that he was wearing boots made this kid not want to mess with him. <laughs> I don't know. Acme, Acme wins again, says Johnny yeah. West as he walks off. <laughs> Acme boots. Yeah, out of the boots. <laughs> Again, they are enormous cowboy boots. Uh, yep. All right. So now we get our uh, classic DC splash page that is taken from, like, uh, kind of summarizes the issue. It's not happening in the moment. It's like a preview of things to come. Mm-hmm. And we see the Rainbow Raider in all his glory there. And uh, he's got quite the outfit. Yeah. It's, he's basically just gay pride Cyclops. <laughs> that's a good <laughs> That is a good summary of it. <laughs> He's got the uh, like rainbow bands on his wrists and uh, hands uh, for his gloves, and uh, his body is like uh, it's got little pointy shoulders, but uh, the front of the body's all rainbow colory. And he's yeah. got black leggings with rainbow boots. <laughs> kind and, of reminiscent yeah. of Rainbow Bright. <laughs> Very much so. Now that you yeah. And he's got like a black skull cap, and he's wear- he wears goggles, not a visor like that, but. Otherwise, yeah, and he's shooting black energy out of his eyes. Yeah, flash. very similar to Cyclops' optic glass. Yeah. And uh, he says, no one's going to call you the Scarlet Speedster when I get through with you, Flash. That's the other thing about this Flash. He's got a ton of nicknames. Yeah. Uh, the, the Scarlet Speedster, the Crimson Comet was on the cover. I think I also <laughs> heard them refer to him as the Monarch of Movement. <laughs> if I'm not oh, my God. This guy's like <laughs> Apollo Mid- Creed. <laughs> Maybe the monarch of motion, something like that. I don't know. But, yeah, he's got a million nicknames. Wow. <laughs> but uh, Fl- Flash is thinking to himself, he's getting hit by this black energy, and he's like, those black ray beams sapping all my energy and every shred of color from my body. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst fate ever. <laughs> How can and you live a, without? <laughs> there's a narration box. At the end of the rainbow, so the old story goes, some lucky person is destined to find a pot of gold. That may well be so, but all you'll find at the end of this rainbow is trouble. For a new costume villain is on the loose in Central City, and not even the Flash can hold his ground against the color schemes of the Rainbow Raider. 
<laughs> oh god. This is pretty great. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, so we open it up and we see Barry Allen leaving work cuz uh, yeah, he's uh working at the police station there. Yeah. He's like a forensics. police forensics guy, yeah. Yeah. Central City. But apparently he's being he claims he's being overworked. He's like, "Oh, I got to work all this overtime." Like, you're the Flash. Why can't you get your whole job done in like an hour? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you can't do that because then they'd catch on. They're like, hey, how's he getting done with this so quick? You know? Yeah, I mean, that's that's fair. Maybe you fill out the whole eight hours, but you shouldn't have to be there from, you know, just till dawn, like when you're the flash. Like, you can get your case done, load done a little bit quicker. So just as he's leaving work, you know, he's, he's been pulling extra hours. He's exhausted. He needs to get home. And, but he hears a call coming over the radio that there's a uh, robbery at the museum. Yeah. And, you know, so he's like, oh, man, i got to go be the Flash. So this is something I was going to ask Peter about. Uh, the Flash wears a ring on his finger. Yeah. And uh, it looks to be on the middle finger of his left hand, which is odd. <laughs> and he, he flicks people <laughs> off in traffic. Sometimes he actually <laughs> activates it, and we all find out he's the Flash. And he, and he flips open the ring, and his costume just shoots out of the ring. Yeah, I actually had seen this before somewhere, yeah. Yeah, I had, I had seen him do this before, but I, it didn't make sense to me then either. So, But I, I guess what, he, uh, <laughs> what what happens here is, I guess because he's a chemical genius, he invented something that is able to shrink down clothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, I guess it's almost like pin particles almost. <laughs> like you shrink yeah. the clothes so that it fits in the ring. I guess it's better than underdogs, you know, just pill ring. I guess this is more wholesome. No, nothing's better than underdogs than illegal narcotics. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. <laughs> the secret compartment of my ring, I feel, with an underdog super energy pill. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he just, does he really, I guess he needs to put it in his ring. He could really just put it in his pocket, you know? Yeah, I mean, most people <laughs> have to wear it under their clothes or something, like... I mean, I the know. flash could change like so quick, you know, like he yeah. can change anywhere he wants. So, um, yeah, it's it's a weird one. Like if you're gonna like come up with just him having a random thing like this, you could at least make it better. Like he still has to change; it doesn't put it on him. So at least if you're gonna make some weird contrivance, at least go all the way and just have it pop onto him or something. I'm not a big jewelry, jewelry guy, business. you know. If I don't have to wear a ring, I'm yeah. not wearing a ring. Yeah. And, and here's yeah. the other question I had for Pete. Because I believe in this, I don't know if they mentioned this issue, but don't they say his uh, wife is dead? Yeah, they do mention this issue. Yeah, how'd that happen? I don't know. I didn't. I had no idea that Iris ever died. Yeah, I'm because just, in all the TV shows and everything, Iris West, like that's his fiance, and she's like a TV news reporter and everything usually or something, right? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know. I guess. I and mean, Wally West is her. And then she, yeah, she's that's her nephew, Wally West. So yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, Pete left us with so many unanswered questions. <laughs> we'll never know. The internet is full of no answers on this one. Because here's the other thing: I actually did attempt to figure this out, like how Iris West, uh, <laughs> if she was dead or whatever. So I went to DC <laughs> Fandom, and they always have Iris West. You know, click it. There's seventy thousand Iris West because <laughs> of all their damn multiverses and everything. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like well, which. Iris West, do I need to look? So I went to like the one, uh, I went to her first appearance and I clicked that Iris West. So I figured, well, that'll take me, but it still takes me to a page of a thousand Iris West. So I don't, I just gave up. Yeah. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> hey, oh, you know what we can do? We can interact with the listeners. If you're out there and you know the true story of Iris West, please let us know in the comments below. Uh, <laughs> see, that'll work. <laughs> yeah. So the Flash is running over to the museum to see what's going on with this uh, robbery there. And uh, when he gets to the museum, Jack, what does he see? Uh, a bunch of, like, four of the paintings are missing. Oh, before that, though, on the outside. Oh, sorry, I'm going to add. He sees a giant <laughs> rainbow. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's like, wait a minute, it hasn't been raining. Yeah. This doesn't make any sense. And then we get an editor's note. As everyone knows, natural rainbows can only occur when sunlight is affected by water droplets. Yeah, I don't know if we Stupid need that. kids, you've learned your <laughs> science. Yeah. I'm trying to escape school by reading comic books. <laughs> and this idiot is making me learn science. What are you doing with? 
So, uh, but now the flash goes in the museum and, and the guards are acting all sad and mopey. They're like weeping and crying. Yeah. Oh, I'm sad Pete's not here for this part because, uh, <laughs> we used to play this game called, I think, Paladins. Um, for some reason, his guy, I don't know if it was one of his moves, it's something with crippling in it, but he always used to say, I gave him crippling depression whenever he uses his move. <laughs> and uh, that's basically what the uh, Rainbow Rare did to these guys. He gave him crippling depression. Yeah, like the Flash is trying to figure this out. He's like, what is going on? And these guys crying. But I guess what Rainbow Raider did was he hit him with some blue light energy. And it made yeah. him feel blue. They're just crying their eyes out. Yeah. <laughs> and they tell him, hey, Flash, there's some guy upstairs uh, robbing the paintings or whatever. So Flash runs up there. And again, he's running super fast. So, <laughs> like, he runs into the room and he sees the Rainbow Raider. But just run over and smack him in the mouth. And this yeah. is all done. This is all yeah. over. <laughs> Yep. But uh, the Rainbow Raider is swiping these paintings, and the Flash gets real close to him, like just a couple inches away. And uh, the Rainbow Raider hits him with uh, some blue light energy out of his goggles there. But the Flash ducks it. Yeah, he's not getting into depression. Yeah. (laughs) His wife's already dead. uh, (laughs) He's already depressed. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But he, like, limbos down. He misses the blue ray, and then he still uh, adjusts to tackle the Rainbow Raider. Mm Mm-hmm. But the well, rainbow be over at this point. Yeah, fights over. <laughs> but what does the rainbow raider do, Jay? Um, he's still shooting his blast, and then like I don't know what happens here. Like why he lets <laughs> go of him? Like he's got him by the legs in the next panel, but it, now they're both standing. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I think the rainbow raider's still down on the ground. They're on one knee, kinda, and oh. uh, he shoots the black uh, energy out of his eyes there. And Flash is like, he missed me by a mile. What's he doing? But uh, he's shooting it off a mirror behind yeah, the Flash. Yeah, one of those surveillance mirrors. Yeah, so it bounces back and hits the Flash in the back and uh, zapped him butt good. Yeah, so, uh, now he's got spina bifida. <laughs> <laughs> Flash says, oh, it feels like every atom in my body has gone numb. And uh, the Rainbow Raider runs out with his paintings in, under his arm, and he just hops on that rainbow, and he's like Iceman on a rainbow. He just yeah. <laughs> this guy's ripping off all the original X-Men. <laughs> That's true. And the cops are like, hey, buddy, on the rainbow up there, you better halt. And he's like, ah, I'm on a rainbow, buddy. See ya. <laughs> and he just took off. Yeah. yeah. They're like, oh, I thought only the Flash could move that fast. So the cops go in and they see uh, the other cop, the, the security guards weeping. And then they look on the <laughs> wall there, and it says the Rainbow Raider was here. <laughs> like it's yeah. this is kind of <laughs> like uh, Batman '89. The Joker's <laughs> just going around the museum spray painting things. <laughs> but look at the little narration box in that panel. But we know what you're wondering about, reader. What happened to the Flash? And then, like for some reason, there's a hand sticking out of that. Yeah, that is weird. I don't Given know like a kind of a there. come hither motion, or maybe it's like <laughs> cupping. <laughs> <laughs> checking for a hernia. Yeah, I don't know what yeah. that hand's doing there. Yeah, I don't know why they would do that. Um, I don't know what it's doing either, but I need an adult. <laughs> <laughs> so the Flash, he's uh, he's running home now, and uh, he's like, ah, oh, luckily I regained su- enough strength to super speed out of the museum before those officers could spot me. I don't any anyone to see me, not like this. <laughs> And, uh, I don't know my dirty secret now that I'm <laughs> black and white. Yeah, all the colors have been zapped out of the flash. So he's just, uh, oh, look, he lives at Utopia Towers, luxury apartments, oh. singles only. <laughs> That's how he knows his wife's dead, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's been reduced to this, living in a singles apartment. Oh, this is great. I forgot about this part. I read this last week. I forgot. <laughs> but, uh. But yeah, he's in black and white there, and he looks in the mirror, and he's like, ah, oh, what happened to me? And uh, then we see Rainbow Raider. He's he's living in, like, a little uh, Winnebago out in the woods. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's got, like, a little trailer park thing going. <laughs> got some deer it's outside. A mobile trailer park deep within the forest. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's just sitting there admiring the paintings that he stole. He's got his feet up. He's still in his Rainbow Raider yeah. outfit. Oh, hey. Coming over, they're going to start making crystal meth. At any moment. <laughs> then, Jack, we get a Batman and Catman on the prowl. Yeah. Is, uh, 
another uh, hostess cupcake ad here. We'll probably have to get nominated, but it wasn't very good. <laughs> I'll say that. This is no uh, great guppies or that dirty beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd say uh, we'll talk about that here uh, at the end of the show because uh, we got a special awards show coming up as well this week. Yeah. And uh, so Cat uh, Robin stops Catman with some hostess cupcakes. All right. Yeah, it's like Catman. Here's something that will appeal to your love of darkness. So call off your cats. Yeah, I didn't know what I that meant. Catman. Yeah. Is he like really emo or something? I don't know. Love of darkness. But hostess is like host or the Catman's like hostess cupcakes, deep dark chocolatey cake. Deep, dark, chocolatey ice cream or ice cream <laughs> filling, too. And by the time he's, you know, realizes he's already been tied around the tree. <laughs> with all the leashes dark. and all of his cat. <laughs> also, Jank, the next ad, it says it begins with shreds of a torn costume and it ends with a single teardrop. And it's uh, the untold legend of the Batman. I never heard of this book. Me neither. Seems like they're just kind of retelling the origin. I don't even know why you needed that. I guess back then people didn't know it as much as they do now, but boy, have we heard Batman's it's a, origin. In it. It's a three-issue limited series uh, by Len Wein, John Byrne, and Jim Aparo. Mm-hmm. So I might have to check that out at some point, even though I don't like Batman, but uh, what are you going to do? <laughs> All right, uh, so now we, re- we uh, join our story here with uh, Roy G. Bibolo, and uh, he's just admiring his paintings, and now we get his backstory because oftentimes when I'm oh, thinking oh. to myself at home, I often re go over my backstory. <laughs> you definitely do. I like to remind you myself how I ended up here. CS hockey <laughs> got started. Uh, where did it all go wrong? But not for Roy G. Bibolo. Uh, why don't you tell the kids his backstory, Jen? Because it is a harrowing <laughs> tale. Oh boy, is it? Uh, yeah. So he was born uh, colorblind. But very artistic as well. So he's always painting. Like from an early age, he didn't want to do anything but paint, even though this is probably the worst occupation for him. But, you know, he, he chose it anyway. And, uh, parents, parents are like, poor boy. He'd rather paint than watch television or play baseball. He's a very special boy, Mabel. It makes his problem all the more heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we and the parents look very distraught in every yeah. shot of the parents. They're like so horrified that their son is colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> He's a monster. <laughs> but they have like a you know, like an art school guy come out to like check out their son's work and he's like, Hey, he's got a lot of talent, but look at this color scheme. Like this guy's what is he doing? We can't <laughs> your son's not going anywhere with this kind of yeah, abysmal this guy's color. In a, in a suit and a vest. And yeah, he says, I'm afraid his abysmal color sense is nothing so short of revolting. <laughs> I think that'd be pretty cool to see a colorblind painter. Just see the colors he uses, you know. Yeah, that'd be pretty awesome. <laughs> like uh, Billy Madison. I just I made the duck blue because I'd never seen a blue duck before. <laughs> and then these uh, the parents again. They just look so sad. The mom, I think, is weeping. Isn't she? Yeah, it looks like a tear coming down her cheek. And uh, <laughs> so, but but luckily, his dad, right? He's like an optoma, yeah. uh, ophthalmologist or whatever, right? Yeah, he's a world-renowned op- optometrist, a true mm-hmm. genius in his field. But he's like, I'm going to find a way to compensate you for your weakness, your colorblindness, <laughs> your boy. Um, and so he spends years working on this. And uh, when the kid turns 21, all of a sudden now the dad's on his deathbed. And he's like, oh, you and your mother don't have to put on an act for me, Roy. I know I'm going fast. Son, you remember the vow I made you? And he's like, I deliberately kept my prisma goggles from a secret from you, Roy. I was sure I had perfected them. I finished the last test only ten days ago. That's that's convenient. Yeah. And I uh, think so, then his dad dies, and and uh, the kid's like so distraught that he doesn't go. He doesn't like uh, use the things, the goggles for a while. He's like, oh, I'm too sad. But now he's like, well, now's the time. <laughs> I guess I'm over it enough. I'm gonna put these goggles on. And uh, he puts them on, turns it on, and it's just a jury grab and gray shock. Uh, everything's still the same. He's like, oh, this, my dad was an idiot. <laughs> he said he perfected this, but apparently not. <laughs> and then, said, yeah. yeah. Then all of a sudden he starts shooting rainbow laser beams out of his eyes. And he's like, whoa. Yeah, because like, he cool. like uh, accidentally bumps a button on the goggle or something. He hit yeah. the switch. It's one of the several hidden switches. Why would you have hidden I don't switches? Wonder, in like, does he know it's a? Like, he seems to know it's a rainbow, but if he doesn't see the colors, how does he know? That's my problem. <laughs> That's the problem I have with this. 
why not just have him uh, put the goggles like and just see color as soon as he puts the goggles on? Yeah, right. <laughs> that would be nice. Because this whole time he still can't see color. And nope. like at, at the end of the issue, they call back to it a, a little bit. But I just don't know why. Like you had to do this. <laughs> I guess you needed a reason for him to turn to crime, even though he still doesn't have a reason. This kid's just a jerk, basically. <laughs> or you could say, like, he, he still saw black and white at first, but then maybe he could paint the world with the colors from his glasses, so then he could see the blue and the green. But they didn't say that either, you know? No. So, no. I just thought it was weird. It's a, Yeah, the whole origin is weird. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he briefly mentions, oh, yeah, my mom's dead, too. Yeah. No idea what happened to her, but, oh, all right. <laughs> he killed her. When he it, and the glasses weren't working at first. Yeah. He basically decides, oh, my dad didn't mean that I could compensate for my colorblindness. He meant I was going to get some sweet compensation out of this by turning these new powers to a life of crime. <laughs> I don't think that's what your father meant. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's it at all. <laughs> I think you're uh, you're just a jerk. <laughs> yeah, they, they show him zipping through the city like Iceman again, uh, making rainbows out of his glasses, and he's just riding the rainbow. Yep. This guy should be the Skittles mascot. He really should, yeah. <laughs> Taste the rainbow. But, uh, they show yeah, him like, since his, he's not motivated by money. He's like, since I was robbed of a brilliant art career as a painter, I think it's only fitting that I rob others, rob them of the pleasure they've derived all these years from priceless works of art. <laughs> I myself was never able to enjoy. <laughs> what a jerk. <laughs> this is the worst backstory ever. But, uh, it has for art. This is the weird villain. So he went through all his uh, dad's for old papers and stuff, and he started figuring out how to use the goggles, and he can shoot, like, just whatever shades of color he wants out of the goggles, and, like, they can do different effects. Like, red makes people angry, blue makes them sad, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Green probably makes them greedy or something. Yeah, or envious. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, now here's my favorite part. Um, we cut back to Barry Adams. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best. So uh, he's in his apartment. Goes, the next morning, as a sultry female form comes knocking on the door of apartment three <laughs> B, and we see this foxy lady in this uh, red dress there, and she's like, "Mr. Allen, this is Fiona from next door. The mailman delivered one of your letters to me by mistake." <laughs> and he says, "Eric, could you just slide it under the door, Fiona?" Uh, I'm uh, feeling a touch pale this morning. Otherwise, I'd invite you in for coffee. And she gets irate. She's like, nope. I don't drink coffee, Mr. Allen, and I don't accept invitations from strange men I hardly know. Good day, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I said good day. And she yep, just can't thinking he didn't open the door. He would have got the treatment, just the drink thrown in his face, I'm sure. <laughs> she just jams the letter under the door and Barry Allen's like oh man my first chance to get to know the beautiful mystery woman next door <laughs> and I have to blow it because of my oh, unimaginable my condition I'll never get another date oh that's the best it's Fiona the mystery woman next door uh, yeah it sounds like it wasn't going to happen either way there Barry <laughs> it's not yeah, it sounds like a jerk <laughs> I don't know. Guy offers you coffee, and she's like, "No, thank you, sir." <laughs> How dare you even ask? <laughs> so he uh, tries to collect himself after you know that heartbreak, and he goes down and he, and he sits down with his favorite book, "The Wonderful World of Color." <laughs> That's just a coloring book, probably. <laughs> he starts reading like, his book. A young Wally West used to draw like color in it when he was a. He, he uh, surmises that the uh, Rainbow Raider saturated his body with radiation that prevents me from reflecting any and all light waves, leaving me totally colorless. <laughs> well, I have identified the problem. The question now is what to do about it. Now, the yeah. thing is, he says the colored black appears black because it absorbs the light waves of all other colors without reflecting them. So shouldn't he be doing that then? Like, Shouldn't he be all black because he's just not reflecting any of the color? Yeah. <laughs> He could just be like a shadow guy. Uh, in theory, but I, I guess the, the, just the black energy bolt just turned his body into that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. 
I like I like seeing him all pale and white because now that he's pale and white, Jank, how does he how does he deal with this? He has to go into work. So what does he do? <laughs> well, luckily he still kept some of Iris's old makeup for some reason. <laughs> dead wife. Even though he's living in a singles only apartment now, so clearly he's moved since then and uh, just decided to keep the makeup. <laughs> I don't know. And, and she has a ton of concealer, so much yeah. that he can put it over his body. entire body. <laughs> Even his chest. I don't know why he was planning to take his shirt off at work, but <laughs> and, and he like puts a, a lot of peroxide in his hair to dye his hair bright yellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, the flesh that I ended up with turned out a little rosy, but it does the job. A little more of this yellow peroxide in my hair, and I'll almost be blonde again. <laughs> So weird. Yeah, looks like a clown <laughs> going into work. It's also like, okay, you've been hit with this radiation that's re- reflecting all this color away. How come this isn't being affected by it? It's now touching your skin. Shouldn't it also be affected by it? You're overthinking it. You're overthinking it. <laughs> so he goes into work looking like a clown. <laughs> and he and he's, uh, he's late for work, and his boss is upset about this. And uh, but Barry Allen says, eh, it's okay, boss. He's like an hour and 20 minutes late. Yeah. He's a flash. <laughs> well, he can't, like, <laughs> use his powers because it might mess up his color scheme. <laughs> He's like, it might make the uh, the, the makeup run. <laughs> he says, uh, don't worry there, uh, boss. I'll stay late. You know, you can always count on me to work overtime. It's not really <laughs> overtime. It's uh, hours that you owe us. But yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but he hears, uh, oh my, there's another, uh, there's a grand opening of the Sky Top Art Gallery. There's a lot of art galleries in this, uh, central city or capital city or whatever the hell it's called. Very, yeah, uh, culturally elite place, apparently. So, uh, he's going there and, uh, hey, oh, hey, hey, by the way, Jank, I've got to go to an art gallery in two days as we're recording. Oh. Yeah. Are you going to go there on a rainbow? I hope so. <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. If I saw. The way there. <laughs> uh, so he uh, is going to this new art gallery and he pops his uh, costume out of his ring because he goes, oh, I bet that Roy G. Bibolo guy will be there. Oh, he doesn't know that's his name yet. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but he pops his costume out and his costume's all white and stuff, you know. And, yeah, uh, pretty cool again. Sure enough, there's like, a rainbow. This would be a good uh, thing to, to do for Comic-Con. Like go as, you know, Colorless flash. <laughs> so sure, cut. sure enough, there's a rainbow over the new art gallery there, and the people inside are someone got smacking the other guy in the face, <laughs> and uh, some ladies are fighting over their dresses. Yeah, and, that'd be uh, great. How dare you wear the same dress I'm wearing? <laughs> On you, it looks more like a tent, honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. And they're duking it out, and then we see Rainbow Raider. He's just chilling on a rainbow. <laughs> He's uh. He already got the paintings, you know. Uh, but then yeah. here comes the Flash. He's running up a wall. <laughs> and he's in his white outfit. And his face is, uh, he's still got the makeup on his face. So we see, still see his pink face. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, the Rainbow Raider, he just uh, zaps him again with something. And, uh, yeah, the real, uh, this is like, uh, I like to call this effect my bright idea. A real dazzler, wouldn't you say? I was like, oh, it's like looking into a thousand bursting flashbulbs. So he falls off the rainbow. And uh, he, he when he's falling towards a car, he, he says, I'm going to vibrate myself so fast that I'll be able to just go right through a car. See, I don't like the, all this stuff the Flash does. Uh, you know what? I'm OK with that. That makes really? sense to me. <laughs> the vibrating. I don't know why, but stuff. it does. Yeah. Like you vibrate at the right frequency. I guess that's basically what shadow. Cad does in a, in a way, so it makes sense as an extension yeah. of his ability. Uh, see, I, I just I think it gives him too much. It gives him too much. You can run fast. That's it. <laughs> that's all we need. <laughs> but he, he's he's falling into this car and he vibrates, so he goes right through it. And it's yeah. Now, what, like the part that I don't understand is when do you stop if you're doing that? Like you yeah. have to rematerialize yourself at some point, and then you're still going to hurt yourself. I would think <laughs> if you do it right in the car, like. Now, all of a sudden, you're in the steering, like, your a parking brake is, like, through your thigh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he's able to get out of it. And uh, I guess he keeps vibrating himself until he writes and, like, starts stepping away. And then he... 
<laughs> one vibrates himself. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, Jack, when he went through the car, the car was green, and uh, now he's green. What? Yeah. I must have been vibrating on the precise wavelength of the color green when I passed through the car, <laughs> somehow allowing me to regain my capacity to absorb green light waves. Yes, yeah, somehow. No one yeah. Is now, <laughs> and how, how come he didn't take on the color of the uh, interior, you know? Yeah, exactly. All the other parts, like the metal at the bottom. and Yeah. <laughs> Just the green. Oh, and I, I guess this is in, like, an old junkyard, too, because, uh, yeah, the cars don't have yeah. wheels. <laughs> I just noticed Clearly that. they have every color of car in this junkyard. <laughs> so, yeah, next he runs through a yellow bus. He's like, ah, oh, look, now I'm yellow and green. This is great. <laughs> yellow I don't know green. how he knows what frequency each color is. Like, <laughs> Well, because he read that big book of you. colors. Yeah, that oh, big book true. of colors. And yeah. it told him all the frequencies. <laughs> So uh, anyway, you see the Rainbow Raider. He's looking down at him, and he's like, uh, he's like, ah, that ball must have knocked Flash right out of his gourd. He's running <laughs> back and forth between those junk heaps like a chicken that's lost its head. Pathetic. <laughs> yeah, he just sees the Flash running around into all these cars, and he's like, what's this guy doing? You know. <laughs> and uh, so now we get through a couple more ads, and now we see the Flash running. He's a Rainbow Raider himself. He's all yeah. rainbow colored. And uh, and he says, now with any luck, when I return my vibrations to normal, boom, he's back to his normal flash. I don't know if this would work. No, it doesn't <laughs> make sense to me at all. <laughs> I don't think the science makes sense here in the slightest, but whatever. <laughs> but the uh, rainbow guy, he doesn't know he's been having this trouble with the color scheme, you know, because he, he can only see in black and white, so it doesn't matter to him. But uh, yeah. He uh, tries to shoot uh, another ray beam there at the Flash. He dodges out of the way. And then how does the Flash take down the Rainbow Raider, Jack? <laughs> well, he basically does what he should have done all along and, like, runs really fast. And he kind of, like, puts a lot of dust up so it gets in his eyes. And then he yeah. is able to take the goggles off of the Rainbow Raider. Yeah, it's kind of like in hockey, uh, a sharp, uh, like a skate stop, you know. You throw the snow up when you stop mm -hmm. real hard. And he just did that with dirt. Yeah. So he buried the Rainbow Raider in dirt. And then uh, he just plucked Which the goggles. If you're wearing, goggles. like, goggles that have elastic band, like, I feel like your eyes would be pretty protected from that. But I don't know. Well, he's just buried in the dirt. So then uh, he walked up and, like, took the goggles off him, you know. Like, he couldn't move. He was trapped in all this dirt. You know? But uh, yeah. and then that that's how it ends, basically. Because uh, he's like, my goggles. Where are my goggles? And he's like, right here. I took the trouble of removing them at super speed. Why didn't you do that at the beginning, <laughs> Flash? Yeah, you would have had this over with, and you never would have lost all your color. You would have to run through every vehicle to oh. try to get your color back. Your short-lived career as a master criminal is over, Raider. This is the end of the line for you, not to mention the end of the rainbow. And we see a rainbow coming down on his head. <laughs> so it's... Next issue, one of the Flash's oldest foes returns. Or does he? <laughs> oh, this is an erotica story. <laughs> or does he? <laughs> Call back to the LCS hockey show. And uh, he's like, uh, be here for Dr. Alchemy and Mr. Desmond on sale April 10th. Mr. Desmond. <laughs> That's not the most intimidating name. <laughs> so, Behold, quake before the awesome power of Mr. Desmond. <laughs> so there it is, Flash 286. What do you think? <laughs> I loved it. Um, I kind of did too. <laughs> yeah, it was so ridiculous. None of this made any sense, but in the best way. I mean, he named the guy Roy G. Bill, though, for God's sakes, <laughs> and, and then he gave him the stupidest backstory ever. He's living in like a camper, and his whole motivation is to steal art because he's mad that other people can see the color. Like everything about this is so insane that it makes it great. Yeah, it's just, uh, this is a classic flea market fantasy comic right here. Yeah. Very similar to the old uh, Luke Cage and Mr. Fish. I would say it's very, yeah. <laughs> it's along those lines as a book. But yeah, a ridiculous villain. Uh, the just Flash. Stuff with the wall hoping it sticks. Yeah, really, like their, their big fight at the end, it was really, they wrapped it up real quick in the final two panels. He just sprays dirt on him and takes the goggles off and that's it. But, um, 
So Which is great. how most of Flash's battles should end that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Just, well, you're done. <laughs> oh, man. So the Rainbow Raider. He's probably going to get nominated next year. I can see it uh, right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking he's he's a strong contender at this point. See yeah, what the rest best, of the year brings us, but yeah. The best villain. All right, so yeah, I don't know, one out of ten here. The writing is, is fine, just goofy, classic comic book from the 70s, early 80s. Yeah, it's hard to judge because it's like, are you trying to make a good comic? Because you failed epically, but (laughs) in a way, you succeeded because it's hilarious. So I don't know, you know, what what his intentions were. I can't judge it based off of that. But what we ended up with was very fun. Don Heck's art was fine. Um, Very classic stuff. Mm -hmm. Definitely seems like 1960s kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, still pretty good, though. Still pretty good. So, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I don't know, Jank. Uh, man, uh, this yeah. might be a solid eight. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? I was leaning like 7.5, but I think I'm going to go up to an eight. I'll round up. <laughs> yeah, with Rainbow Raider. I mean, <laughs> what can you, you can't go wrong. There. <laughs> yep. Yep. All of that was great. Uh, the interaction with the neighbor, like, was ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Fiona. <laughs> I need to learn more about this Fiona. Do you think she ever gets together with Barry Allen at some point? I feel like, yeah, there's got to be like a whole moonlighting, will they, won't they situation going on with <laughs> this neighbor. I mean, if Pete was here, he'd probably know. hate each other, or do they? <laughs> <laughs> Pete would have been able to answer that for us, but he's not here. <laughs> All right, yeah, I don't so... think he knows much about the history of Fiona. I'm going to go out <laughs> on a limb here and say uh, not so much. All right, so there it is, uh, Flash. We both enjoyed it quite a bit. All right, so what do you got for us next week there, Jack? Okay, so I got a bunch of things I've been wanting to pick here. It's kind of torn, but I think I'm going to end up going with, uh, we're going right to the end of the Bronze Age again, that very, very end of it, <laughs> where it just barely <laughs> qualifies. Uh, we're going to do a book that we've done before, uh, not a, a hero that's a favorite of ours, and a villain that we've done somewhat recently, but there is a reason I'm picking this. Uh, so we're going to do Thor number 412. It's part of the Acts of Vengeance crossover thing. Uh, and this was the first appearance of the New Warriors. Pretty much the only Bronze Age appearance of the New Warriors. So, Okay. I, I was getting out of comics at this time, so I'm aware of the New Warriors, but I never read any of the New Warriors or anything. So. Yeah, I've read a little bit, not a whole lot. Mm. But they've always intrigued me, so I'm interested. Is, it, is this like when Thor was, uh, what was his name? Didn't he, wasn't there another guy? Yeah, uh, Eric. Eric yeah. Masterson, I think. Or Eric Masters, one of those two. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep, well, this will be it. interesting. All right. Yeah, very different era for Thor, for sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, we haven't really haven't too much Thor here on the show. We did, uh, I think we did the Beta Ray Bill, right? Yeah. Anyway. And there was like a Thor annual, I think you guys did early on. They had like the Guardians, yeah. the, all the Guardians of the Galaxy. I was like episode oh. four or something very early. Yeah. And, uh, and it ties into this week's episode because he also travels on rainbows quite a bit. <laughs> <That's fair. laughs> all right. So that's next week. Thor issue 412. Thanks to Jack. And uh, thanks for Pete. He was here in spirit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he gave you crippling depression. <laughs> we'll get him back <laughs> on here soon. And uh, so Thor next week. And until then, don't get any jank on you.